Hi all, in today's video, let's take a look at this famous math question from the anime Madoka Magica. The students in the anime are all middle schoolers around the age of 14, yet the math questions they have to solve are seriously difficult. To put this into context, the question taken from the screenshot below from episode 9 of the anime actually came from the entrance examination of Japan's top university, which is the University of Tokyo. Let's take a look at the question. They define a sequence of natural numbers xn which is generated recursively. The first number in the sequence is 1 and thereafter, to generate xn plus 1, you replace each digit in xn with 1 if the digit is 0 and with 1 0 if the digit is 1. As an example, since x1 is 1, to get x2, we replace the digit 1 with 1 0, so x2 equals 1 0. To get x3, we need to look at x2 and apply the rule above digit by digit. Since the first digit of x2 is 1, x3 will start with 1 0. We continue further and apply the rule above to the second digit, which is 0, so we replace it with 1 to see that x3 equals 101. With that said, the question requires us to figure out how many digits are there in xn, preferably giving a formula in gross form for the answer. The second part of the question asks about the number of consecutive 0, 1 in xn. The first thing to do when seeing questions like this is to play around with the first few terms and see if there's a pattern which we can spot. In this example, when I write down the first few terms, the number of digits seems suspiciously like the Fibonacci series. Now we have got the intuition, how do we go about proving it? We need more information for sure. Why not we break down the number of digits further into two columns, namely the number of digits 0 and 1. This seems like the next logical thing to do. We see that those seem like Fibonacci series as well. Let's call the number of digit 0 as dn and the number of digit 1 en, so we could work with them more easily. Now that we have got a few series an, dn and en, we can think about how they are related. First of all, an equals dn plus en, and this is self-explanatory, as the total number of digits equal number of digits 0 and 1 added together. Now, we need to think about the rule given to us earlier, to generate xn plus 1 from xn, which tells us to replace 0 with 1, and 1 with consecutive digits of 1, 0. If we have the number xn minus 1, note that each digit whether it is 1 or 0, give rise to a new digit of 1 in xn. Therefore, we get the relation en equals an minus 1. What about dn, the number of 0 in xn? Well, in this case, in xn, a 0 is only generated as part of the consecutive digits 1, 0 if we have a digit 1 in xn minus 1. This means each digit 1 in xn minus 1 gives rise to a digit of 0 in xn. So, we have dn equals en minus 1. After we get all these relations, we can now substitute the third equation into the first one to get an equals en minus 1 plus en. Furthermore, using the second equation, we can see that an equals an minus 1 plus an minus 2, which is indeed the Fibonacci series. Since an equals 1 and a2 equals 2, we shift the indexing in the Fibonacci series, which goes by 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, up by 1, to get an equals fn plus 1. Now the second part of the question is where the fun begins. We need to find the number of consecutive digits 0, 1. So let's continue building our table by adding another column. The number looks rather similar to the Fibonacci sequence, but a few numbers are out from place. Let's continue and play around and see if we can discover more relationships. It looks like the terms generated themselves are quite interesting. Why is this so? It looks like the process of replacing 0 with 1 and 1 with 1 0 has exactly the same effect as concatenating the previous two terms together. To put it simply, to get x n plus 1, we just write the digits in x n out followed by the digits in x n minus 1. What a shocker. But this but this needs to be proven. Let's try and think about how to go around proving this, which seems to be impossible in the first place. 
let's formalize the recursion of generating xn plus 1 from xn formally by calling it the function f. We want to prove that applying the recursive function f is the same as writing x n minus 1 and x n minus 2 out, one after the other. If you want to prove statements indexed in natural numbers, which seem tricky to tackle, induction is your best friend. Here, we want to induct on n, so we check that the base case is indeed true for the first few terms, n equals 3, 4, and 5. Next, we start our induction hypothesis, which assert that xn equals the concatenation of xn minus 1 and xn minus 2. We apply the recursive function to both sides of the equation. The next observation is crucial to the proof. Since the recursive function is applied digit by digit to xn, we can apply the recursive function to xn minus 1 and xn minus 2 separately. However, by hypothesis, f applied to xn minus 1 gives xn, and f applied to xn minus 2 gives xn minus 1. Combining this allows us to complete the induction by concluding that to get xn minus plus 1, f is applied to xn, but this is akin to concatenating xn and xn minus 1 together. Now, we are ready to find bn, the number of consecutive digits 0, 1 in xn. As before, let's construct a table and write down a few examples. Now, with the previous induction proof, which says that we obtain xn by concatenating xn minus 1 and xn minus 2 together, we can see that the number of consecutive 0, 1 for xn equals the number of consecutive 0, 1 in xn minus 1 plus xn minus 2. And depending on the final digit of xn minus 1, we might have another extra copy of 0, 1. If xn minus 1 adds n with a 0, this will result in another copy of 0, 1, during which we concatenate xn minus 1 and xn minus 2 together. Since the first digit of xn minus 2 is always 1, regardless of n. This allows us to write the relationship bn equals bn minus 1 plus bn minus 2 plus pn minus 1, where pn equals 1 if xn ends with 0 and equals 0 otherwise. Due to our inductive proof before, it is not hard to see that xn ends in 0 and 1 alternately or pn equals n plus 1 modulo 2. Doing all this still isn't enough, as we want the final closed form formula. Unlike the first part of a problem, even though the recursion formula for bn looks like the Fibonacci sequence, it is not exactly the same, as we have to tack on p n minus 1. Nevertheless, let us add another column to our table, that of the Fibonacci numbers. A good thing to try when trying to solve a problem for a closed form solution is to try and spot useful patterns in an attempt to guess the solution. This is exactly what we are going to do. Notice the hockey shaped cells highlighted in red and green, which seem to suggest that bn plus pn equals fn minus 1. We need to prove this, however. To do this, simply substitute this solution, which we guess, which is bn equals fn minus 1 minus pn, back into our original recursive equation we found earlier. Clearing all the terms, we get the expression pn equals pn minus 2, which is obviously true. This means the relationship bn equals fn minus 1 minus pn holes, and we have solved the problem. I think there should be other solutions out there, so please feel free to post your version down in the comments below. In this solution, I show you a few important techniques when it comes to dealing with recursive formulas. To summarize, Try and find as many relationships as you can exploit, and don't be afraid to guess a closed form solution if you have an intuition or idea for it. As long as you manage to prove it, it doesn't matter from where you pluck your initial idea from. Okay, we have come to the end of the video, and I hope you have enjoyed the video and learned something, and I wish to see you in the next one.